will continue initially with the review of monatomic uh, statistical mechanics of monatomic gas uh, and then we will do diatomic gas today itself. We did it once before, but we, we, we uh, need to redo many other aspects because these are fairly detailed things. Uh, so, um, you can call it as a revision, but it is more likely uh, many new new information will come in in today's and uh, so in the study of statistical mechanics and study of any subject which is a bit mathematical uh, and we involve in a lot of equations, it is worth going through this many times. Like when you used to derive equations when you were a uh, student, one of the things that we are told and we did is that we derived the same thing many many times. That is the way to you do not memorize it, but you derive it many times. You go through it many many times. It is like painting when you in order to understand something and get get it inside you deeply, you do like we do painting of the wall, you know you, you do several coats. So, we will briefly and quickly go through few things and uh, then we will go to the new things today. We will be in a monotomic gas, we will do two new things which we missed before. Then we go to diatomic gases and we will do some old and some new. Now, we may that uh, uh, in the last class we discussed first the partition function and the partition function is uh, the thing that we I, it, I have here on my board uh, the q n and uh, in the uh, circle rate that q n coming from uh, integration over the uh, momentum and uh, a integration gives volume real space integration gives volume and then this uh, is essentially then what happened that uh, 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 q small q that we derived has contained this this uh, this quantity and multiplied uh, by the volume. So, n particles we have now q to the power n and then we go in and we derive that that the free energy. So, all these details were done in the uh, previous page. So, we did that that we wrote down uh, q n uh, is q to the power n by n factorial and then we have the volume q n to the power n factorial and uh, q is this quantity that uh, 2 pi m k b t by h square to the power 3 by 2 and the volume v. Uh, that was the quantity when that q n with this q is used in uh, uh, a, 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 the statistical mechanical expression of free energy, statistical expression of free energy in uh, minus k b t ln q n, q n partition fun, uh, canonical partition function, then we get this. And then one get an expression of free energy in terms of n total number of particles in the system, temperature of the system and the volume of the system. This is really beautiful. An exact expression, a microscopic expression, what is Helmholtz free energy? And that has is a function of A is a function of N V T and I have those dependence and we have now some very fundamental quantities like I have Boltzmann constant K B, I have mass of the particle and I have the Planck's constant. Okay. This is a beautiful really beautiful expression this um, in the box. Now, then I can calculate by using thermodynamic relation from this free energy I can now calculate pressure. Another and then another beautiful thing comes in that is uh, equal to n k b t, which you all know the ideal gas uh, law. So uh, then the next uh, uh, what we did, we went on using that partition function uh, and the and the Helmholtz free energy. We get the entropy. And the entropy then uh, is obtained by d a d t v the thermodynamic relation and now we get a beautiful expression for entropy again the expression of entropy includes the n the number of particles temperature t and when i remove v by n in by using the ideal gas law then it is in pressure so entropy suddenly is a exact expression of uh, which in uh, depends on total number of particles in the system, the pressure of the um, um, uh, gas and the temperature T. Again, I have the mass of the particles 
is a monatomic gas, monatomic gas, only one gas, this can be generalized to binary mixture or three particles things uh, almost uh, trivially. Then what will happen? Um, I have to add say I have argon and krypton, then I have n argon here, number of argon uh, will come in here and uh, then mass of argon will come here, everything same, ratio remains the same. Then I will say n of the krypton and then again mass of the krypton again remains the same. So, it is ideal gas law you know follows Raoult's law. So, you add up the entropy multiplied by the number of them and if I say entropy per particle then it will become mole fraction. So, the things to remember and the things to really note that you have a number of particles n uh, and we have the temperature T here and we have the pressure P here. If you have the volume there volume B. This is the famous circuit paper equation which I discussed is used in many, 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 many uh, applications. But I before I go I really want to impress upon you the beauty of this equation uh, that this is uh, where the temperature comes as 3 over 2. So, if I combine temperature with this with it becomes T to the power 5 by 2 and these are um, much less known than and much less emphasized, but these are um, some the, the elegance, but these are beautiful thing. So, then we commented that we use the Sakutator equation in a dark DNA integration. We discussed this thing that in, in um, that uh, this a drug is going to go into minor or major group and this is a very important problem in chemo chemotherapy or many other drugs and then in doing the calculation there is a beautiful paper by Charles and there is a paper beautiful paper on drug DNA intercalation uh, which you can do the name of Casey Hines, uh, J T Hines, Jax um, I think 2000 uh, I think uh, probably 13 or so and with that this thing was used this Sakutator equation was used to calculate the free energy of intercalation and this is very important that we get the free energy of intercalation because that allows us to choose or select drugs with this, this you know uh, uh, very very important. Then we use it extensively in the formation of dro uh, water droplets in the cloud and that um, you know the, this entropy when the water goes to form a droplet uh, a bubble water droplet which has to become cloud uh, rain that is lot of loss of entropy because the, 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 the instead of moving separately they are stuck together and a big mass and so then um, the entropy uh, decreases but that thing is 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 in the, uh, used in uh, um, in many many other in euclidean many many other things so continuing now that i gave some uh, numbers because you should always think in terms of numbers and in entropy number is always in terms of this um, KB unit that is called entropy unit the, uh, in the honor of Boltzmann, Boltzmann constant. Now, this is under uh, ambient conditions uh, that means their respective their liquid state, their uh, gas state. Neon is uh, the entropy is this and uh, argon is this. So, they are pretty close to each other this 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 uh, uh, this, this uh, entropy and uh, they are with the uh, whatever exponential values we have uh, by integrating uh, thermodynamic variables they agree almost exactly in the in with the, with the um, experimental values. So, now we will do two simple calculations which we have not done before and they are very nice calculations, they are simple calculations, but they use some uh, mathematics. So, uh, so we now derived expression for pressure, we derived an expression for entropy, we derived an expression for free energy, we, we derived an expression specific it uh, 3 by 2 r and 5 by 2 r. Uh, 3 by 2 r comes just as I showed you from here and then 5 by 2 r because you add r to it which comes from PV terms H equal to E plus PV because PP is DA derivative of enthalpy and enthalpy comes with the PV extra PV term. So, uh, that PV then we replace PV by RT and you take the derivative then 1 r comes which adds to 3 by 2 r and you get 5 by 2 r. That is the reason that CP is 5 by 2 r 
and C V is 3 by 2 R the P V term the extra P V term that goes over to becomes R T in the uh, for a mole one mole for ideal gas law. Now, we will do something we have discussed the grand partition function, but we have not used too much of grand partition function. We will use the grand partition function later quite a bit, but now we are just somewhere about um, in the beginning of the statistical mechanics course and uh, but we are already getting many many nice results, but we will get one more nice results. The result that we used extensively in your Kressman uh, chemistry or in sophomore chemistry. Uh, but the, in, in solution chemistry or in undergraduate chemistry, at least I can personally say myself, I found it boring and even now teaching it sometimes fairly boring, though there are a lot of very nice books have come to make it easier. But the problem of those physical chemistry equations is that they are introduced much of the time, they are not derived. And uh, example says a solvation, uh, the concept of chemical potential why the chemical potential goes at logarithmic term that comes as a kind of derivation uh, as, as a definition. But uh, what we will do now it is not a definition we will derive it from statistical mechanics more fundamental why chemical potential goes at logarithmic of density is a very important very important quantity remember in your um, uh, undergraduate study that uh, we, we start working on a chemical potential. And, uh, and which is a very important quantity and in uh, describing the flow of matter, but that is proportional to logarithmic density. So, if we keep low density, high density together, then matter flows from low density to high density and the driving force will be given by the logarithmic of density. And that goes into the diffusion equation in Fick's law and all this kind of stuff, which we will do later uh, as we go along the way in, in a little bit of time dependent statistical mechanics, which is just a wonderful subject. So, uh, what we did before that we did the uh, grand partition function and grand partition function is this quantity e, e to the variant that is can be I, I wrote it also like that. This quantity and here the z is the uh, uh, fugacity and mu is the chemical potential. So, z equal to e to the power beta mu. So, this is the relation between chemical potential and fugacity z. Mu is the chemical potential and z is the fugacity. So, this is the and remember that this z or beta mu comes this in terms was a Lagrangian multiplier or uh, un, Lagrange's undetermined coefficient and mu came as the conservation condition that number of particles must be conserved. Now, so, do you, you form from micro canonical ensemble to when you go into canonical ensemble, we introduce conservation of energy uh, in, of my uh, super system and that conservation of energy of the super system that means, there is energy exchange within the system, but in the super system which has been put by contact putting them uh, in contact with each other. So, that exchange energy and can attain a temperature T, then the however, the conservation of the total thing was uh, con is maintained conservation of total energy of my super system and that conservation condition gave rise to beta the temperature beta the um, temperature uh, term beta beta is 1 over kdt. <coughs> it came as an undetermined coefficient, but it came as a conservation condition. Similarly, when you go to grand canonical partition function, then the chemical potential or fugacity came again as an undetermined coefficient, but to take care of the conservation of the number of particles. So, this is very very important that they come very naturally from a very fundamental condition that is conservation of energy, conservation of number of particles that means, they are not ad hoc. Now, then with that uh, 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 going that uh, the way just like q n was sum over energy levels e to the power minus eta i k b t we get grand partition function as e to the power beta mu n and q n v t which is written here in another form. So, now we will do something very interesting with that. Before you do that if I now talk, talk of ideal gas in ideal gas I know q now q is a quantity which goes as q to the power n by n factorial. This is the 
ideal gas or monatomic gas. That means I have an exact expression for Q. Now, those of you uh, 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 like mathematics, you can initiate this in immediately see that this is a, a something to the power n and this is also something to the power n z, z is e to the power minus beta u. So, this is uh, uh, z to the power n, this quantity z to the So, I have 1 to the power n and the z, so z and in, in q multiply and to the power n and divide by n factorial and what does that remind you? That remind you that becomes nothing but an exponential function. So, e to the power z q, it becomes e to the power z q. So, now, now uh, and that, so now we know in, uh, we know in, uh, so I have an expression for grand partition function uh, that is e to the power z q and I know q. So, this is the my grand partition function beautiful. So, now I also know that that chemical potential and number of particles are conjugate of each other and the exact relation between them they is uh, just like pressure is dv dp, um, uh, entropy is ds dt, d a dt and uh, everything like that number is related to this grand partition function through a of chemical potential. Now, when I put q and all these things together here, because this is e to the power beta, it z is again e, e, e to the power beta mu, I add them here, put them, I take a log term and then this beta u comes, mu comes in front and then uh, a, a ln v will comes it and then I take the derivative uh, um, uh, of this quantity, then e, e to the power z q, then uh, it becomes, uh, it comes out as z q and q is a proportional to volume and z is e to the power beta mu. Then when I do that uh, simple algebra, I get uh, the derivative, the, the uh, a derivative of exponential is exponential brings me beta out down and when I do these things together, I get just this beautiful relation. So, now you see the volume V the volume if, if, if n becomes this quantity. So, now I can take this v on that side uh, or I can take, yeah, I can take v on that side, I can take n by v that becomes density and lambda q. So, this, re, this whole part is taken there. So, giving rise to me this term and uh, is e to the power beta mu and then I take the logarithmic term and beta becomes 1 over kBT. So, you can easily see that I get this beautiful relation, this beautiful relation I like. So, I use one more color. So, this beautiful relation. Now, that means chemical potential is a logarithmic of density. Many times we write ln rho which is not correct because you cannot put a dimensional quantity within logarithmic or you cannot put dimensional quantity in exponential. So, so something is missing in these equations we, we, we do. A, but in, in, in classical physical chemistry, we just write ln rho, we cannot not, there is always that function lambda cube there and uh, or many times what we do, we do chemical potential with respect to one uh, another species or another uh, state, then delta mu term, then I have you know uh, ln minus, minus ln and then I that becomes uh, ln a minus ln b is ln a by b and then lambda cube cuts out you get ln rho 1 by ln rho 2, ln rho 1 by rho 2 sorry. So, that is why lambda q is always kind of a silent player in all these things, but I really want to impress upon you this this beautiful relation that mu, mu goes as ln rho. This is something which is hugely used. So, when I talk of non-ideality, so this ideality chemical potential is dependent on linear uh, logarithmic dependence on density. But when I talk of non-ideality now, the non-ideality we just uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, introduced other activity coefficients and other quantities. That is where this is where it enters all these things. So, there is a very solid foundation of these things. These were actually these terms were actually done in by Gibbs himself. So, that is why in the thermodynamics of solution theory, 
uh, many many things that Gibbs equation, Gibbs dual equation and all the stuff because this was worked out by Willard Gibbs himself. Now, uh, so there is a little bit of writing here now that which let me read through. Chemical potential is the change in internal energy on addition of an extra particle when the entropy and that is given here this um, you know, this thing. Uh, now, however, an extra particle would result in more number of arrangements in the same volume as a result entropy increases. So, basically what one trying to tell here the chemical potential in uh, and that is how it is done in um, undergraduate textbooks. The chemical potential in ideal gas when their molecules are not interacting with each other, each other is an entropic origin. It is very, very important to un understand that chemical potential in ideal gas law is an entropic origin. Uh, so, ideal gas law gives us a, 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 a fantastic way to talk of entropy because you all you have is entropy and what we do then later when you add interactions. Many times we try to preserve the entropic term, the ln rho term like in remember binary mixture ideal entropy of mixing. What is that? That x i ln x i. So, essentially rho i rho i ln rho i which is has the same 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 basically the same structure of ln rho term coming and then multiplied by the relative weight of that ln rho term. This is just just beautiful things that, that the way they fit together. But this is a very and important thing is talk here that it is the entropy that is the uh, important uh, player here because in ideal gas law we do not have interaction energy. But by uh, entropy alone we get a huge number of phenomena and as I again I am repeated this part of entropy we take we try to take over when you do interacting systems the real system these are not real but very important just like particle in a box in quantum mechanics is important harmonic oscillator is important rigid rotator is important and, and then you go and start doing after doing these things you start doing uh, at, uh, hydrogen atom and hydrogen molecules here also will go over the complex system ok. So, now uh, we now know uh, we want to go to the uh, and very important very important uh, second calculation of the uh, uh, monatomic gas uh, ideal monatomic gas then we will and, and, and a result of fire exchange consequence a result that is used extensively in, uh, in, in for example solid state physics and uh, in spectroscopy. Uh, uh, in conductivity of solids you know the electron gas and that kind of a problem where we need to know how what is the number of density of states how many number of quantum states between energy e uh, at energy e between e and de that is called density of states uh, and is very important how the density of states changes with energy and there is a simple trivial calculation but very nice calculation that let us go through that anyway. Now, you have done uh, particle, you have done quantum mechanics particle in the box and you know that the energy is given by <laughs> this quantity, uh, given by this quantity that uh, E is a, a square by 8 m square in x square in x in y are the quantum numbers and their values are from 1, 2, 3, uh, 4 like that. Um, these are the a. Uh, We have, we have discussed at length why this quantum number starts from 1 and they are integer numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 like that. Now, uh, this is a beautiful equation. Now, I realize if I can a little bit messaging of that, then n x square, n y square, n z square, I can write it at n square. Then that n square and I can take now this quantity, uh, this quantity. Uh, on this side, then I can write, and this is going, going, going to be very important 8 ml square by 8 square. I go there, okay. so and then n square becomes equal to 8 ml square by 8 square e term. Now, uh, this is uh, I can call these uh, as n x square n square all these things like you know x square plus y square plus x square equal to a square that is the equation of sphere. So, this is the equation of sphere and then I will have something very interesting thing to do 
because this is centered at origin in three dimension. Now, that becomes the radius now, but I know the radius, I know the radius, that radius in turn is given by that. Okay. Now, one plays a very, very smart game and is that we now want to consider that we have a sphere, hypersphere, let me consider two, uh, like that. And now, this, uh, this is a sphere. Now, in that sphere, uh, I have n x, n y, n z all has to be in the uh, positive. The, I do not have n x, n y, n z uh, negative. So, if I say n, uh, n y, n z and n x, now I want to calculate. Now, I say they are all, I, I point and then then these are the point which are correspond to n x, n y, n z in that one um, a, uh, one part, you know, one octant of that in the, in the, in the hyper in the sphere, three dimensional sphere. So now I can now play this smart game. I said, okay, the total number of state would be, you know, when these are very large. In order to calculate the total number of states, all I need to do. And this is their placed unit 1 and this is the real uh, uh, crux of the matter that n x, n y and n z increases by 1, n x goes 1, 2, 3, 4, n y goes 1, 2, 3, 4. So, there is this uh, grid that I am forming, I have all spacing 1. So, that allows me to if I get the volume, because of the uh, this unit thing, the volume gets me total number of density, uh, total number of states. And that is what I do now. And since one eighth of it, so I know the total number, uh, total volume, and total volume is this 4 pi, 4 pi by 3 n cube, n is the radius, and n is nx square plus ny square plus nz square. And then I have this total number in all these regions, all the one eight is 1 8 4 pi by 3 n cube. That is just, just beautiful. So now I also know what is n. I just did in the last class. So, by n is um, n square, n square is 8 ml square by h square See that I did in the last slide. So, n cube is then 8 ml square h square by 3 by 2. This is just wonderful. So, total number of states is increases as e to the power 3 by 2. So, it increases fairly rapidly and also what is very interesting that it depends not only on the energy, it also depends on the mass and it depends on the length of the box. Remember, L is the length of the box in this, in this, in this, in this particle in a box model. So, uh, now, the, but this is not the density of states. I am interested in density of states. It is not the density of states. This is the total number of states. Now, how do you do density? What is the definition of density of states? Density of states is that you take the, uh, the energy, the number of states in E and E plus E, that is the density of states. And uh, so, you do it by taking derivative, you know, this, this number. So, it is it's, 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 it's an increase from E to E plus del E is of course, will be proportional to del E in a linear way. So, now we do that little thing. and. Uh, this we get that density of this is omega is the density of states fairly universal notation and then I get the derivative of daily, I can divide by daily and this daily is lurking here. When I do that, then 3 by 2 comes out and this 3 by 2, this 3 by 2 comes here and that 3 cancels this and uh, I get a 2 and 2 is here, so I get 4. So, I get pi by 4 here then 8 ml square by square remain untouched 3 by 2 and 3 by 2 become root e, um, e to the power 3 by 2 derivative e to the power half root e. So, this is a beautiful, beautiful result which shows that omega e goes as square root e, density of states in a particle in the box goes down and this is, this is very important. This is the result as I told you is the result is used in uh, many applications. Now, there is one more interesting result, very interesting result that comes. Now, we do not have one particle, we have n number of particles. So,
So we do not have a sphere, we have a hypersphere. And in hypersphere now, you have the volume that is co going as 3 to the power n by 2. And then you can do exactly same derivative, I say 3 n by 2 becomes uh, minus 1. And these in the volume, uh, this uh, gamma to the power um, 3 n by 2. And this is gamma n plus 1 is nothing but our n factorial. Uh, and this comes in the volume of the 4 pi by 3 that factor comes like that and then and this is coming again from um, the particle in a box energy. So, you now have you now have density of states of n particle systems. So, this is the density of states of n particles in a cube in a cube of length l. So, you have a cube in a hyper of length l and uh, this beautiful thing now is omega e uh, daily you can be has to proportional daily, but daily is not the important quantity important quantity is these two n factorial that comes from the um, a, uh, uh, it is uh, the same logic as Poisson function, but this is the one which comes from the uh, factor factors that come in the volume and e to the power 3 n. So, now you can see a very, very important thing that we made already allude to in the statistical mechanics in the initial part that there is a huge number of states when you particularly when you go to little high temperature. So, number of states or density of states of n particle system scales as e to the power n and uh, that is a very important result and this means there are huge number of states up there and this is an exact result in an ideal gas law exact result, but as I am again and again telling much of it goes over even in interacting system and this is the one which is used now in the conductivity problem and many other calculations of solid state physics where electrons are um, used as free particles and that is a very important model of uh, um, such so physics that free electron gas and when you are one talk of free electron gas, we take the mass of electron m there and then we calculate this, uh, we use these these things in the uh, uh, particle uh, in a form, okay. So, this is what we uh, wanted to talk of uh, this beautiful thing of uh, in a in a uh, way of uh, classical and uh, quantum uh, the beautiful uh, interaction between class uh, quantum uh, uh, and statistical mechanics and then uh, uh, so we will take a we will take a short break and we will start on the diatomic uh,